Miriam Ross Tampur had come home from a dentist appointment and was resting on her couch when her doorbell rang. When she opened the door, her life and the life of her roommate changed forever. Miriam and Marzia were born into Muslim families in Iran. As young adults, they both became Christians. Converting from Islam is a crime in the Muslim world, punishable by death. The girls knowingly risked their lives and put Bibles in the hands of 20,000 people. They even started two secret house churches. In March 2009, Miriam and Marzia were arrested in Tehran, held in the infamous Evan prison, where they faced execution by hanging. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Miriam and Marzia. It's nice to have both of you with us. Thanks. Thank you. Miriam, let me start with you because this whole thing started with you. You were on your couch in your own apartment. You'd come home from a, a dental appointment. The doorbell rang and what happened? Yeah, the day we got arrested, I was home waiting for Marzia to come back from the security police. And um, I knew that something bad would happen because we were both suspicious uh, mm -hmm. about the phone call that Marzia had received in the morning. And uh, it was about 4 p.m. I, uh, I heard uh, the doorbell rang and uh, I heard the sound of Marzia with a few others behind the door. Mm -hmm. I looked through the people and I, uh, I could see her with three guards standing in front of the door. And uh, for a moment, I thought that I needed to do something. Um, I wanted to hide our cell phones, um, you know, to protect mm -hmm. our friends and their information. And, um, you know, I wanted to uh, turn off this TV because we were using satellite, which is illegal. Ah. And um, I, I, I was thinking that I needed to call someone and let them know what was happening. But my mind was in shock and I couldn't do anything. I just opened the door yeah. and um, they came and they came and they entered our apartment. They ransacked everywhere. And they took both of us with all our belongings, uh, our Bibles, Jesus movies, um, and our pers personal belongings to the security police. Marcia, when you came, when you came in that day, and the two of you were taken away, you were taken to a detention center first for a couple of weeks, and then to Evan Prison. Yes. What were the charges against you? Uh, you know, for uh, the first day and especially the first week, uh, we were so scared and pale. Even we couldn't talk because their behavior was so brutal and humiliating. And uh, the only thing that we could do was praying in tongues for each other. And God really strengthened us during that time. And they sent us to detention and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, promoting uh, Christianity uh, to be a Christian, it's not uh, illegal. Uh -huh. It's legal. It's not legal. And they had to give us another charge. And they uh, sent us after uh, 15 days, they sent us to Evin prison with the charge of anti-government, blasphemy, uh, apostasy, and promoting uh, Christianity. Just based on the materials that you had in your yes. apartment and whatever their suspicions yes. of you were. What were the conditions like in the prison? I mean, we hear about Evan Prison here in the Western world and the horrors of it. What was it like? Of course, um, it was awful. Um, this prison is uh, notorious for arresting, torturing, raping, and executing of many innocent people. There are many respectful and intellectuals like religious prisoners, like lawyers, students, journalists, and even doctors who are in prison just because their beliefs are against the government's inhuman uh, rules. And like other political prisoners, we spent 259 days in this prison. And uh, we had the experience of being in solitary confinement. Wow. And uh, once a week, we were being interrogated by two interrogators for long hours. So in solitary, you aren't even with each other. That must have been very frightening, Marzia. To, you don't know what's happened to her. They can really lie about things. and make you think something's happened that has not. How did you survive that? Uh, as Mariam explained, uh, our situation in 209 was uh, very worse and uh, they separated us for about 20 days. And uh, uh, each week, uh, uh, once a week, we were, uh, we were being interrogated by two interrogators for uh, long hours, about eight, seven hours. And uh, yeah, they took her and I became very uh, worried about her situation because I didn't know where she is and just I was praying for her it, to be safe. And, uh, you know, uh, we didn't have any information about outside. The cells was very small and mm -hmm. uh, 
just we prayed and God, God really helped us during that time. What kind of deprivation did you see and experience in the prison? And I know that illness often is something that people suffer through there. Talk a little about that, Miriam. Yeah, for nine months we were both um, sick and we, had, we were suffering from different kind of diseases. Marzia had many problems, kidney problems, tooth ache, and um, she had headaches and she, she was sick all the time. And I had problems. I was poisoned twice in prison. And um, they, after two weeks, they sent me to a doctor and she gave me a medicine uh, which was wrong. And again, I was poisoned. And the doctor just laughed and told me, oh, OK, I, I think that I gave you wrong medicine. And it was not just about us. Uh, it, there were many prisoners in this prison, mm -hmm. uh, like political prisoners and um, other, other uh, normal prisoners. They are suffering from this uh, um, you know, situation in this prison. At first, I know that you prayed to be released. I mean, I think that would be the natural yes. prayer of anyone yes. that's stuck in a situation like that. But then you began to pray for other people and see God move in the midst of your situation. What? Tell us some of the things that happened there. Marzia, why don't you start? Yes, yeah, you know, for the first week, uh, I mentioned earlier that we were so scared and just we prayed for our release because uh, we, we didn't want to be in that uh, brutal place. and. Uh, but after that, we, we had many uh, great opportunity to talk with many prisoners. There were many uh, prostitutes, addicted people, and uh, most, of them, most of them, they were so hopeless, sad, and disappointed. And we had a great opportunity with them. Before uh, we arrested, we had uh, two house chairs. One of them was uh, for prostitutes, and the other one was, uh, was uh, for young people. And uh, when we were in prison, uh, we had this opportunity to to uh, be with many prostitutes and uh, every day we gather to each other and pray and they cry and s some of them they uh, confess their sins and it was like a church for us and that's why we we understood that it is God wills to be yeah. in that prison and we pray for all, most of prisoners. What was the lowest point in prison for you? Mm. You know we spent 259 days in prison and it was only one day that uh, I couldn't feel the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, at that time we were in solitary confinement and we were not together. And one day I just woke up and I couldn't feel the presence of God. That was the worst experience I've ever had in my life. I was so sad. I, I didn't know what to do. I was with a Muslim woman. She was political prisoner. And uh, I just uh, heard a voice in my heart and, and that told me that start singing. And, uh, you know, I, w I wanted to sing, but I couldn't find the words. Uh, I knew many worship songs, mm -hmm. but I couldn't sing. And something was stopping me from praying and singing. And uh, I felt that I needed to start singing in tongues. And, uh, you know, there is a rule in that um, building 209 that no one is allowed to even speak loudly. And, um, but I just, at that moment, I just wanted to talk to my father. I wanted to have relationship with mm -hmm. him because it was so scary for me that I couldn't feel his presence. And uh, just I started singing in tongues very loudly. And uh, the woman in my cell was so scared. She told me, Mariam, please be quiet. The guards will come and they will punish you. But I, I continued singing. After one hour, I could feel the very presence of the Holy Spirit all around me and in my cell. And also my cellmate, who was a Muslim woman, she could feel the presence of God. And she, she asked me, uh, please, can we um, uh, w sing in Farsi? I want to join you. I, I taught her some worship songs. And we started singing with each, with each other. And after two hours, I could f really feel the peace and joy and um, God told me at that day that um, I am with you every day, even if you don't feel my presence. That's a good word for everybody who's listening to your testimony. After 259, yes, 59, 59 days, you were released. Why do you think you were suddenly released? You know, we believe that the first reason that we got released, uh, it's because of God's grace and God wills. And uh, the second reason, it was uh, about the uh, 
Christian supports. We heard uh, many Christian all around the world. They were supporting us uh, either by praying and sending letters to prison, which was so encouraging for us. And yeah. it made the Iranian government angry. And also uh, we heard that uh, some uh, international organization like uh, United Nations, Amnesty, and even Pope from Vatican, they sent letters to uh, Iranian government. Yeah. And the Iranian government, they knew that um, many people from all Around, around the world, they were watching their activities, uh, by ke their brutal behaviors, by keeping us in this dark and brutal pl place. So it makes a difference when yes. people sign yeah. these things. Sometimes we hear of someone who's in a prison scenario in another yes. country, and online we're asked to sign petitions, and it does make a difference. What are you both doing with your lives now? Um, our main goal here is to be a voice for voiceless and uh, we just we are now we are living in a free country we don't want to just live for ourselves and yes. we promised uh, some of our friends in prison that we we, uh, we will be a voice for them in future and we wrote our book captive in Iran and we hope that we can spread the message of our book and be a voice for those who are still in prison who are still suffering uh, by spreading uh, the message of our book and by, uh, you know, uh, we put the names on our website, captiveiniran.com, uh, the names of those uh, people who are still in Evin prison because of their faith. And we want to encourage people to continue praying for them and continue sending letters to prisoners. Prayer makes a huge difference. And we want to just encourage our viewers to go to your website and to pray for these friends that you have put on there by name. Miriam and Marzia have written a riveting book. It's called Captive in Iran. It's available wherever books are sold. I highly recommend it. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Pat? What incredible women. What incredible women. I say it again, ladies and gentlemen. This is a vicious, evil system. And these are just two victims. Just because of what they believed. They believed in Jesus for that hideous time in prison.